Today is the 12th of December. Welcome to Walking the Way. My name is Ray. I want to say thank you to everyone for listening in as we continue to explore what it means to have a regular rhythm of worship, particularly around this time of year known as Advent, where we look forward to Christmas and the birth of Jesus. And if you're joining us for the first time, let me explain that each episode follows a really simple pattern of scripture, prayer, and music. But without any more preamble, let's start today's leg of Walking the Way with our opening prayer. Let's pray, shall we? O God, you give tender care to all creation. Sustain us in our efforts to continue your work. O Lord of all, you came to set us free and to judge your poor with justice. Help us to help those who are poor and continue to experience injustice. O you of Jesse's stem, you came as a sign for all peoples. Come to our aid as we work for a world of justice and peace. O Key of David, break the shackles of those who are in darkness and lead your people into freedom, especially those people who are unjustly imprisoned while defending the poor. O Christ of Light, come and shine down on all who live in the darkness of modern slavery. O Prince of Peace, come and save the nations, especially those currently in turmoil. O Emmanuel, Saviour of all, come and set us free, so that through your loving care we might help bring freedom to others. Amen. And we're going to have our first piece of music to centre our thoughts on God, and after the music we're going to get into our Bible readings for today. Let's ask God to speak to us as we get into his word today. Heavenly Father, we open our ears. We also open our hearts. That these words of truth may fall upon the very fabric of our lives. We ask that these ancient scriptures come alive within us. To inspire us, to heal us, to cleanse us, to teach us, and to restore and to guide our hearts and our minds. Lord, come weave your words of life in us. Amen. And our Bible readings this week are taken from the God's Word translation, and we begin with Amos 8. This is what the Almighty Lord showed me, a basket of ripe summer fruit. He asked, What do you see, Amos? A basket of ripe summer fruit, I answered. And the Lord said to me, My people Israel are now ripe. I will no longer overlook what they have done. On that day the songs of the temple will become loud cries, declares Almighty God. There will be dead bodies scattered everywhere. Hush. Listen to this. Those who trample on the needy and ruin those who are oppressed in the world, you say to yourselves, when will the new moon festival be over 
so that we can sell more grain? When will the day of rest, a holy day, be over, so that we can sell more wheat? We can shrink the size of the bushel baskets, increase the cost, and cheat with dishonored scales. We can buy the poor with money, and the needy for a pair of sandals. We can sell the husks, mixed in with the wheat. The Lord has sworn an oath by Jacob's pride. I will never forget anything that they have done. The land will tremble because of this. Everyone who lives in it will mourn. The entire land will rise like the Nile, be tossed about and then sink like Egypt's river. On that day, declares the Almighty Lord, I will make the sun go down at noon and darken the earth in broad daylight. I will turn your festivals into funerals and all your songs into funeral songs. I will put sackcloth around everyone's waist and shave everyone's head. I will make that day seem like a funeral for an only child and its day will be bitter. The days are going to come, declares your mighty Lord, when I will send a famine throughout the land. It won't be an ordinary famine or drought. Instead, there will be a famine of hearing the words of the Lord. People will wander from sea to sea and roam from the north to the east, searching for God's word, but they won't find it. On that day, beautiful young women and strong young men will faint because of their thirst. How horrible will it be for those who swear by Ashima, the idol of Samaria, and say, I solemnly swear, Dan, as your God lives. I solemnly swear as long as there is a road to Beersheba. Those who say this will fall and never get up again. Revelation 1, 17 through 2, 7 When I saw him, I fell down at his feet like a dead man. Then he laid his right hand on me and said, Don't be afraid. I am the first and the last, the living one. I was dead and now I am alive forevermore. I have the keys of death and hell. Therefore write down what you have seen, what is and what is going to happen after these things. The hidden meaning of the seven stars that you saw in my right hand and the seven golden lampstands is this. The seven stars are the messengers of the seven churches and the seven lampstands are the seven churches. To the messenger of the church in Ephesus write, The one who holds the seven stars in his right hand, the one who walks among the seven gold lampstands says, I know what you have done, how hard you have worked and how you have endured. I also know that you cannot tolerate w wicked people. You have tested those who call themselves apostles but are not apostles and you have discovered that they are liars. You have endured, suffered trouble because of my name, and have not grown weary. However, I have this against you. The love you had at first is gone. Remember how far you have fallen. Return to me and change the way you think and act, and do what you did at first. I will come to you and take your lampstand from its place if you don't change. But if you have this in your favor, you hate what the Nicolaitans are doing. I also hate what they're doing. Let the person who has ears listen to what the Spirit says to the churches. I will give the privilege of eating from the tree of life which stands in the paradise of God to anyone who wins the victory. Matthew 23, verses 1 through 12 Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The experts in Moses' teaching and the Pharisees teach with Moses' authority. So be careful to do everything they tell you, but do not follow their example, because they don't practice what they preach. They make loads that are hard to carry and lay them on the shoulders of the people. However, they are not willing to lift a finger to move them. They do everything to attract people's attentions. They make their headbands large and the tassels on their shawls long. They love the places of honor at dinners and the front seats in the synagogues. They love to be greeted in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But don't make others call you rabbi because you only have one teacher and you are all followers. And don't call anyone on earth your father because you have only one father and he is in heaven. Don't make others call you a leader because you only have one leader, the Messiah. The person who is greatest amongst you will be your servant. Whoever honors himself will be humbled, and whoever humbles himself 
will be honoured. We're going to have our second piece of music just to give us some time to think about the bits of scripture that have caught our attention. And after the music, we're going to say our prayers for today and the time of the year. Let's pray, shall we? God spoke, the words sang, and you, Holy Spirit, were the music that called life into being. You are the divine dance upon the water of nothingness, the footsteps of God, the whirling, joyful extravagance of creative love, the dazzling overflow of God's life, heartbeat of God's love, fire of God's justice, sharp blade of God's word, dove of God's peace, You are the midwife of new birth. In water, in bread and wine, in living dust creatures, the living God lives with us and in us. Glory, glory to you, unpredictable, holy, life-giving Spirit. Amen. And our prayer for the time of the year. Jesus, I can see your special love of those who are often invisible in the world. Open my heart to fill with compassion for those who are hungry and without dignity. Grant me the ability to live simply and to see you in the face of those around me. In the darkness of these Advent nights, let me be guided by the light of your word. Give me the humility to be led by you and the wisdom to learn from you. I am grateful for the Saviour who awaits us and eagerly await the time of rejoicing. Let me look forward to hope and trust to you with great trust, knowing that you will guide my steps along an unknown path of today. Amen. And we say together the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, 
now and forever. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us now and forevermore. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. And you've been listening to Walking the Way, the podcast based on the book This Day, A Wesleyan Way of Prayer, by Lawrence Holstuki and published by Abingdon Press. All of the details for today's episodes can be found in the show notes, which will include scripture passages and credits for the prayers. And if you want to partner with Walking with Let's try that again, shall we? And if you want to partner with Walking the Way, please head to www.givesendgo.com forward slash walking the way. And if you want more information about me or the podcast, please visit rayborrett.co.uk. You can find me on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. And don't forget, you can also listen to us on TuneIn and YouTube. My name is Ray. And so until next time, I'll be here waiting as we continue walking the way.